Cheltenham marks the official kickoff for the British racing calendar. Last year there were some changes to the fashion rules resulting in some disappointing looks, but of course the stars of the racing runway remain members of the British royal family, with Zara Tyndall and Princesses Beatrice and Eugenie leading the way with their classically British style. Hello and welcome to a millinery hat commentary video. My name is Ilona, I am a milliner based in London and today I will be reviewing the best and worst looks from the Cheltenham Races 2024. If you are planning to attend such an event, I hope you find this video useful in guiding your fashion choices. Meanwhile, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more millinery and hatting videos. Now get your tweed coat and pair it with your feather trimmed fedora and let's get started. I haven't managed to identify all the hat makers and designers, so if there's a hat you recognise as belonging to a specific milliner, please let me know about it in the comments. Let's start with an obvious one. Do match your hat to your coat. Princess Eugenie is wearing a cream wool coat with a matching felt fedora. The rest of her outfit consists of an array of calming brown tones which complement her lovely hair colour. The key to the success of this outfit is its simplicity. Not only do the colours match, but so do all the textures. The suede boots are just as soft as the coat and hat, and the leather bag has a soft shape. Now, this is how not to match your hat to your outfit. This light blue textured suit is absolutely fabulous, especially with the addition of the pearl choker and the white stole. However, that hat is a bit too much. While the base of this beret button looks like it is felt, which is the appropriate material for early springtime events, the trim is mixing five different textural elements. If we zoom in, we can see felt flowers with pearl centers. Now, if this hat was left with just that, I think it would have been perfect. But in addition to the sensible trim, we've got some summer elements that just don't belong on such a hat. A triangle-tipped stripped cock and burnt peacock feather mount paired with a burnt, curled and dyed pheasant feather and a stripped, curled ostrich quill. These feathers are opposing textures, they are fluffy at the same time as being too spiky. This contrasts too much with the rough texture of the whole suit. Do try a trouser suit. I don't think we see enough of this in the world of hat fashions. This style of perching hat goes really well with wide leg trouser suits. I love this look on Zara Tyndall with the double breasted pinstripe jacket. There's a bit of burgundy in her handbag, which is matched in her hat from Camilla Rose Millinery. The pop of red in her blouse completes the look. Speaking of pinstripes, do channel bygone eras. ITV's Megan Nichols coat is clearly inspired by Edwardian walking suit styles of the 1910s. The elongated, tall and straight silhouette is accentuated by the contrasting red buttons, which are of course picked up on in the red button hat. This is just enough red to make it an interesting accent colour for the whole outfit. Do match your feathers to the lining of your jacket. I think this is my favourite outfit of the whole event. The angle of the white percha matches the angle of the neckline in the white dress. But what absolutely steals the show here are the tilted Lady Amherst pheasant feathers, which match the lining of this lady's coat. The hat is finished off with a flourish of a gently curled quill. Do have fun mixing the colours of your outfit. If seasonal country tweeds in drab browns aren't your thing, well, here's a way to wear some light spring colours without it being brash. A classic spring combination of light green and pink makes for a fabulous combination. The perching hat looks like it has been made using the same fabric as the suit. The textured smocking is just the right contrast to the smoothness of the suit, and the realistic roses are a perfect match to the pink coat and turtleneck jumper. Also, how fun is the pineapple bag? It's on the border of being novelty, but because the colours and fun tone match the whole entire outfit, I think this lady can get away with it. When you are having fun with colours, make sure your textures still match up to the season. I've already spoken about this in the previous light blue suit example, but here it is again. 
this yellow disc hat is mixing too many textures and elements. It's got a fabric flower with a spiky rolled organza leaf arrangement and a honeycomb veil disc. And just because all this clearly wasn't enough, we've got another triangle tipped stripped cock and burnt pheasant feather mount. The rest of this lady's outfit is fabulous. I think yellow is a very underworn colour in this season. Perhaps I would recommend my bees in your bonnet hat to match this outfit. I've got a video on how I made this hat, which I will link to in the top right. While we're on this image, I'd like to point out another don't, but this time in relation to the whole body silhouette. The lady in black in the centre has a lovely grey teardrop percha trimmed with a chenille black veil and a black quill. She's got very broad shoulders, so I would recommend wearing some wide leg trousers to balance out the look, rather than the skinny trousers that she has chosen here. Top marks, however, to the lady in red on the right. She has a very interestingly shaped disc hat trimmed with a felt and guinea fowl feather flower. The hat is balanced with an arrangement of black and white feathers on the underside, which are balanced with her black coat under collar. Here's a lovely way to incorporate a pop of colour to liven up a neutral outfit. Zara Tyndall is wearing a zingy green perching pillbox trimmed with a felt bow. It's such a simple design, and as the rest of the outfit is monochrome grey and black, your eye is immediately drawn to it. Of course, this green is a lovely match for her complexion and blonde hair. I would have loved to have seen another pop of the same green somewhere else in the outfit, perhaps in the gloves, or the leather bag, or even both. Now, of course, brown is usually the colour of choice for Cheltenham. It's very British country. First, let's look at Princess Beatrice in her camel coat paired with a black bag, suede boots and top. Her hat is a simple bandeau shape with a textured black and cream pattern. Having the only pattern beyond the hat is a perfect way to highlight an outfit, as it's the only textured and patterned accessory, your eye is immediately drawn to it. Next, here is Georgia Toffolo in a tan suede coat. Tan is a very warm shade of brown, so pairing it with a red skirt and a simple red bandeau hat brings out its warm tones. A perfect trick to feel warmer on a cold day. And here is my personal favourite shade of brown, dark chocolate. Tallulah Riley is wearing a double-breasted long trench, which she's paired with a simple chocolate fedora with a feather band. Don't wear a fabulous suit without a hat. What a shame that these looks from Jade Holland Cooper look so incomplete. With this three-piece suit, I would recommend a simple camel-coloured fedora trimmed with a pheasant feather. With this double-breasted blue houndstooth suit, I would recommend this sumac alpaca hat in navy, similar to the one the Princess of Wales wore on her trip to Sweden in 2018. And lastly, with this three-piece suit, I would recommend a black felt teardrop percha, especially as Jade's shoes appear to be suede, so the textures would match. Something again like the Princess of Wales wore in 2023. Although I will point out that if it's likely to rain at a hat wearing event, please do take an umbrella with you to not let your hat get wet. That's something that Jade is demonstrating very well here, even if her hat is missing. And just to demonstrate that you don't need to wear a super complicated fancy hat, do at least wear some sort of hat. Hats don't have to be super complex to complete an outfit. Here are multiple examples of race goers enjoying the festivities without overthinking their outfits. We've got that navy sumac alpaca hat paired perfectly with a navy houndstooth jacket I was recommending for Jade Holland Cooper, while this lady's friend is wearing a Baker Boy style flat cap with her tan wool coat a simple black fedora with black suede boots and a matching bag, and extra points for remembering to protect the hat from the rain with an umbrella. Another fluffy hat. In this lady's outfit, the fluffiness is mirrored in her magnificent collar, and the bright emerald colour of her coat stands out in the most fabulous way. 
And of course, simple dressing isn't just for your everyday person. Queen Camilla also wore a fluffy hat with a bottle green jacket, and Princess Anne went for a camel trilby with a cream underbrim. I'd like to end on my opinions about the fashion rule changes and why I think this is a tragedy. Unlike at Royal Ascot, there's never actually been an official dress code for Cheltenham, although the unspoken rules were to dress smart as a sign of respect for the event. Since 2023, the Jockey Club has eased their restrictive dress codes across all their 15 venues. The reasons they give for this is because they want to make racing accessible and inclusive. Now this is a great reason. I happen to agree that racing should be made more accessible and inclusive, but relaxing a dress code just doesn't seem right. In my opinion, the best way to have achieved this goal would be to lower the price of a ticket. By relaxing the dress code, I actually think it makes it much harder to know what is appropriate to wear to an event. If you've never been to the races before and there aren't any style guides, how are you going to know how to dress? In Britain, we are big fans of uniforms. Just look at our pageantry, our schools, our police force and even our judicial system. Dress codes form the backbone of British society and as soon as you take them away, well, you get jeans, trainers and novelty suits at the race side. There aren't many places anymore where formal dress is the way to go, and I think it is a shame that the last few formal wear occasions open to the majority of the public are being eroded away. In an era where we are becoming concerned about fast fashion, surely encouraging more slow fashion formal wear is a logical step on the way to reducing overconsumption. Thank you so much for listening to my opinions. I'd love to know if you agree with me, so please do leave me a comment down below. While you're there, remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more millinery and hatting videos. Thank you all so much for watching. See you next time. Bye!